For step 21, we need some components from our bag C. Uh, these are the three by 25 millimeter machine screws. We need two of those. We need a BB1, which is a three by 10 millimeter machine screw. And we need a flanged nut. Uh, this is the flanged nut without the plastic locking feature in them, but they have a serrated edge instead. So we need three of those. And we need D6, which is the front bumper. And yeah, there we go. I'm gonna pop this now onto the chassis. So this bolts to the front of the chassis. They can see the outline in D6 where this section of the front of the car goes. And it's a case of lining that up, which it does. And we need to put shorter of the screws through this front one and the longer of the screws, the two back ones. So I'm gonna pop that into place now and get that screwed into place. So I'll pop the longer of the screws, like it says, and the shorter of the screw here. It's quite obvious, and it's a case of tightening these up. Uh, you can use your Tamiya tools, or if you don't have the Tamiya tools, just to show you, you can use the smaller of the box wrench that comes with the kit, and then from underneath, come underneath and tighten that down. And it's a case of tighten down. Again, tight, but not too tight. If you want it nice and firm, but you don't want to strip the threads out and go mad. There we go. So now I'm, I'm moving here, it's nice and tight, plus an extra sort of half turn on this one. There we go. Step 21 complete. So steps 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 are literally virtually the same. It's assembling the front and rear dampers. So rear dampers first of all, and then you pop them onto the chassis, and then the front dampers, and then you pop them onto the chassis. So it's a case of making up the suspension components, the, the damper components, popping them together and popping them onto the chassis. So it's quite, quite a repetitive section, but nevertheless, very important. So we'll get our components together and we'll get our dampers put together. So what I'm gonna do here for ease of, of sort of displaying to you, because they're actually the same, just different sizes, I'm gonna do 22, 23, 25 and 26 all together as one. So I'm gonna make all four dampers up and fill them up and make sure that they're nice and compliant. And then we'll show you 24 and 27, which is putting them onto the car. So that's how I'm gonna organize this section here. So these are the components we need for our front and rear shock absorbers. The only difference for these is that for the rear, you use X and Y parts, and for the front, you use V and W parts. Uh, they're slightly different sizes of the um, plastic uh, components for the cylinders of the dampers, for example. So the rear ones are slightly bigger than the front ones, and the accessories that go in the two hole pistons etc here are slightly different sizes um, but effectively everything else is the same and the method is the same so that's what we're doing and so here's the components we need to put these together or e-rings i call them they call them here they actually go around the pistons and do need to pop in the little pistons on and then the c-clip again and it's a case of assembling them exactly the same uh, just except for front and rear being smaller and again on the rear you've got the little red caps here and green caps here for the fronts and uh, slightly smaller at the bottom for the, the ends so simple as that just put them all together so popping these little e-clips onto the piston you line up the e-clip and gently squeeze it into place 
There we go. And that's nicely into place there. So the next step in the pistons is now you've got your E-clip on one. You pop the piston with the desired holes. We're going with the initial setup, which is two holes. Take your little E-clip and you then put it onto the top of the piston like that. Line it up. Take your long nose pliers and get that into place. And I just put my nail in and just make sure it spins. You know it's located in the grooves. There you go. So that's that bit. And I've done that for all four, like I did with the Eclipse. Next, we've got our O-rings, which we need to put a little bit of silicon, put a bit of the damper silicon oil over just to lubricate them a little bit. So I'm just doing that on a cloth. So they've got a little bit of silicon. That's all I'm doing there. And then you put two of these into each of your pistons. So I'm just gonna take my pistons and then you then pop the bottom of the pist of the damper, you take the bottom screw cap. So you pop two in each one, like so. And then your bottom cap, you just screw that on. You do that four times for each of those. So where I differ to the instructions here, it tells you to pop the piston through on all four shocks and then pop the bottom end onto the actual piston shaft. I don't do that. What I actually do is pop my hole, pop my finger over the hole, the bottom here, and I fill this up with a little bit of oil, then pop my piston through and then fill up the shock and do them for all four, fill up the shock oil. The idea is, is we're trying to minimize the amount of air in the shock. And I found that, which is one that I've picked up from uh, Pete Wiley of Pete Wiley RC. So thank you, Pete, for this. Um, he does the same thing. He pops his finger over the hole at the bottom, fills up with oil and then pops this through to minimize the air. So I'm gonna do that for each four. Thank you, Pete, for that great tip. So by doing that method, by popping the oil in and then putting the piston shaft through, if you look, I don't know if the camera can pick this up with the light, but there is no air bubbles, which is really, really nice. So it's a quick way of doing the shocks without getting the air inside. So now I'm gonna do the same for all four shocks, same method, fill up the shocks, pop the relevant caps on and pop the relevant tops on and make sure everything's nice and tight. So there we go. Perfect. And so filled up these with the oils, put the caps on and uh, tighten them down. And they're all nicely smooth action. And the last bit I now do, again, a little bit different to the way the drawing is, I then pop the end. And these, end, these ends have already got, um, they've already been threaded for you. Um, so I, just gently here, I'm using a pair of electronic pliers that is not serrated so I can grip this directly, literally grip it directly, nice and firmly, and tighten that on so it's, so it's tight. That's it, that's not going nowhere, that's as tight as it will go. So now you have your piston in place. So all four are now done. So next up for the front and rear dampers, we're going to do steps, parts of steps 24 and parts of step 27 together. And we are technically putting in the X components. So your X5, then your X6, 7 and 8. And for the front, you've got V5 and then V6, V7 and V8. And your springs for the rear and your springs for the front. And we're going to put those together to make the unit and then we can then screw each of the units to the four corners of the car and if you put your components out like this just so you can see what you're doing it's relatively simple and straightforward it's really nice and easy um, so yeah so that's what we're going to do next 
So showing you how to make these up. As you see, I've done three already. So I'm gonna show you how to make one. So you've got your damper, your spring. You take your X or V5, depending whether it's the front or the rear. So in my case, the X, pop that on. There's your spring. And then we're gonna go with the initial, put all of the spaces and the tightening up already in. So we're gonna do that now. So X6s, X7s, sorry, X4s, X6 and X7s are in place. So there you are. So you now have a smooth damper and I have now four of those. We now put those onto the car. So here we are. I now have the components to do step 24, which is attaching the rear dampers onto the car. So we need the remaining components, which are the three by 15 millimeter self-tapping screws in the darker color, which is shaded. And these little brass looking uh, flange tubes, are four by six millimeter, we need four of those. So we need two for each damper. And the same again for the front. So doing step 27, we're doing the same thing. It's the same components. So the, your, your three by 15 millimeter uh, BC3 screws, you need four of those. So two for each of the dampers and your BC5s, your flanged tubes, six, the four by six millimeters, you need two for each of the dampers. And we are gonna now attach them to the car. So you can see how I've laid that out step by step, each corner of the car, and now we can repeat and put them on the car. Okay, so to attach the rear dampers, so we, first of all, we need to pop into place this N1, which is a, a mount that goes out for your body. So that has to be screwed into place on the other end of the upright. And you've got like a section here where it literally goes either side of the plastic. There's a little recess in there. So you take one of your three by 15 millimeter screws and you screw that into place like so. There we are. Again, don't go too mad. Oh. And now we have our body mount. We pop the suspension on. So we now pop the damper. So you pop these tubes, these brass tubes, and you pop them one of them in, into the into the end there. And the idea is, is this acts as a washer. You then attach your 15 millimeter, three by 15 millimeter screw into the hole and we screw that into place. So that's the, the top mount that you pop into place. And you screw that down. Like so. And it literally screws until it stops. So you can't screw no more. There we go. That's that one. And then we have to do the same again for the bottom. So we take our brass spacer tube. And this time we pop it from this side. And we collect the hole nearest to the axle. And we screw into place. And then that will be the rear suspension mounted. And just so I can show you that, there we go. Fairly easy to do. I'm just using the end of the fingertips on the end of the screwdriver. There we are. Done, tight and a quarter turn. That's all you need, don't need too much. There we go. So your rear, done. And now for the Front damper, much the same method as before. You take your brass tubing, then we take our screw. Again, making sure that this washer this tubing, the washer end, is nearest to the actual ax, the actual um, out arm, the A arm, and then you screw that into place, like so. I'm just going to do that left-handed because I'm trying to make sure you can see it on camera. 
There we go. Don't go mad, just need it to nip up. There you go, nip up so it's tight. And the same for the top. Again, you pop in your brass tubing, and again, make sure the tubing is this way around. So in you go. And as you can see there, you can see the tubing. Oh, fell out. Whoopsie daisy, pop it back in. And you take your three by 15 millimeter screw, line up the hole. Again, gonna do this left-handed. There we are. And tighten that down until it stops. There we go. Now have the front done. So that's effectively 22 all the way to 27 completed and on the car. There you are. So here we are, we are downstairs and I'm in my um, self-made spray booth um, from my nice cardboard box that I've cut out to make nice and uh, wide for the components. And as you can see, I've sprayed the wheels and I've managed to spray the wheels um, alloy wheel color. Um, <laughs> I like my alloy wheels to be like alloy wheels. Um, so this is what I've done. So I've had a couple of coats here and what I've done is just to keep everything nice and warm, I've kept the paint nice and warm and I've used um, you see, a paint stripping gun um, at a distance of course. And all I do is I heat up the, uh, the wheels, just heat them up just slightly so they're nice and warm, spray on them and apply a little bit of heat afterwards just to make the paint uh, dry off nice and quickly. So that's what I've been doing down here in my um, self-made spray shop. <laughs> like it. So we are on step 28 still and we are doing wheels and tyres and um, now I've popped the tyres onto the wheels and the front ones there you've got the two fronts and you've got the two rears there we go rather than those orangey fluorescent things nice and alloys and all I've got to do now is sort of 12 six three and nine on both sides of the tire put a bit of um, cement as they call it cement is super glue tire glue um so they, they want us to glue them up so that's what i'm gonna do um the that'll be the wheels and tires ready to go on and then on to turn on to step 29 so get in there nicely for step 29 we need some more components from our bag c so we need our flanged locking nuts. We need four of those. These are for the wheel nuts. These have a plastic section inside to help with the locking. Um, we need some more of our bearings. Um, so again, the white plastic spacers, trash those, they're no good. And I'm gonna replace those with my 1150 bearings that I have, which I've used throughout the model. And we're also gonna need um, some pins some, or little shafts, the BC6, we need two of those. And we need some A1 parts. These go on the wheel axles on the rear. It's a case of taking our rear wheels and tires and our front wheels and tires and placing them on to the chassis. So that's what we're going to do next. So with the rear wheels, two by 10 millimeter shaft and the A1 part. And you line that up so that the shaft fits through the grooves in the A1 part. And then you take your rear wheel and line up the hex in the rear wheel, like so. And take your wheel nut and you fix that in place. It's quite a deep dish. Use your Tamiya box spanner to tighten that down. And it's as simple as that. Until it's nice and tight. There you go. That one's on. Repeat that for the other side. For the front wheels, 
you take your bearings, so using the metal bearings, you place those in the front and the rear, like so. They're nicely in. And then you place that onto the front stubs, like so. Take your wheel nut and screw that on. And then using your box spanner, tighten that up. Like so. There you go. And that's the front and rear wheels done. And you can see that spins really well. Bearings, definitely a must. So I'll position the camera and we'll take a look at the chassis in a moment. So for step 30, we need a D8 part and a couple of the BC15 snap pins. And this is the, the battery holder that you pop in place. So you literally pop that in place, you put your battery in there and you will put those in place and uh, that holds the battery in. So we'll do that later on, but that would effectively now be the steps completed of the chassis build. And here we have the chassis all built up and looking rather nice. There we are.